What year is it? Whoa, what? <gasps> day is it? The date? 12, May, Thursday. What year? No, what year is it? Uh, Bell. Well, do you know something about him? I might if I saw the case file. You could get that for me. So it's been 30 years since Silence of the Lambs came out. So at least to say it holds up. Like I, I want to rewatch this film because I think I missed a lot of things in this film. Just imagery and just like shots and just everything about it. I've probably missed a whole bunch. But hopefully I'll tell you guys in a competent way how I actually felt about the film. It's really good starting off. It's actually a really good film. It holds up even 30 years later. A killer is on the loose. Keep some real physical strength, cautious, precise. And he's never impulsive. He'll never stop. Marcus of all minds. Just do your job and never forget what he is. And funny enough, the best scenes about the whole movie are the scenes between Clarence and Hannibal Lecter himself. And I believe there's only like three or four like scenes with them together. That's just, that's crazy to me because those scenes alone shows you how Lecter can connect to Clarence and what well, he not only respects her, because he like mentions all the things that she is, like all about the lambs and whatnot. And Lecter himself, he's just able to like tell like, or just like dissect people in, in ways that I actually just don't understand. And then Clarence, she's kind of the underdog, right? Where everyone's just kind of disrespecting her because there's again shots of in the elevator scene, all the man that you know way bigger than her there's comments being thrown at her that she's a woman and whatnot and then there's that scene where she's looking at all the jails and whatnot and all those guys are like creeping on her and whatnot so she goes to like Hannibal Lecter himself and he's just a, this very quiet and like tolerable person that seems to respect her and whatnot until you actually get to talk to him and he's really insane but he also respects Clarence and in a way both of them connect with each other despite being a serial killer and Clarence being a up-and-comer you know cop and whatnot she like respects him in a way and also connects to him which is kind of cool kind of messed up because you have all these other normals so called normal people that can't really connect to from an emotional and just like trying to connect in a human way perspective she only connects to Hannibal Lecter a goddamn serial killer and that's a really interesting like contrast between the two and within these four scenes it's great and then his breakout scene where he like tricks the cops and wears cuts off a person's skin uh, his whole skin off well like one of the cops or guards puts his skin on by tricking everyone within the whole building and whatnot they can get out like that shit he's not only a like, quiet patient but also very smart now also begs the question of how he even got locked up but either way it's just uh, he's insane and smart the same way and he's like a cannibal he got arrested for like killing and then eating people because he just he loves it he's an awful person but in a weird way i guess i guess in a messed up way i just really like him and he i guess he could like respect them for first of all being evil and messed up and just being intelligent person like kind of respect and it's awesome to see that oh yeah and i forgot to mention the, the reason why her higher ups are telling her to go talk to elector because there's a current killer called buffalo bill who's going after you know killing people as well and she needs to talk to someone similar or have the perspective of a serial killer to see what they're going to do next and whatnot and that's why she's going after and talking to Hannibal Lecter but then Buffalo Bill himself the current like serial killer he's just not redeemable at all he is crazy and evil in many ways he has this woman capture it on messes with her dog or cat I think someday we'll do an animal cruelties in the film so if you're someone who doesn't like that probably won't like this movie but he's just super fucked up and that one scene I keep seeing from Family Guy I now know where it's coming from this guy with the you know I would do me scene All I thought was Chris Griffin, Family Guy. All I was thinking about, I was like, oh, okay. So this is where this is coming from. It's all I could think of was Chris Griffin. But yeah, it's cool to see like an insight to get, you know, like that's where, you know, it came from basically. There's also something to do with bugs and insects that I can't, I don't know about yet. Again, I, I want to rewatch this film because I'm probably missing what's the point of like the bugs and insects. Are they supposed to like correlate to human beings and how human beings can be so fragile or evil or something like that? Again, something about insects that I'm like completely missing. I'm not getting yet. So I don't know, maybe it's because I've only seen this film once and i probably rewatch it again so probably missing that that's probably the one thing like what the hell's up with these bugs i might that's the one thing i thought i just kind of don't get i need to rewatch it to see what it actually means there's probably some kind of symbol in this or theme to it that i'm just not getting then going along with the film or not she finds out that the buffalo bill killer are going after people that he know personally and then there's this girl that you know we meet in the whole well and whatnot he knew this girl on a very personal like way so she you know clarence figures that out again just elevating that you know she's an intelligent cop and detective and she's you know the underdog and then the lamb part because the reason why the only reason why we know this film or the existence of it or all the lambs mean that's the only reason why we know th about this film so i was watching that when's the lamb part gonna come in and it's like yeah when she was little she would like think her parents or like her father like, would kill lambs and she would try to silence it by covering her ears and her ears and whatnot and then to like cover the death of like the lambs one please what did you see lambs they were screaming 
they were slaughtering the spring lambs. I think that's what they said. Don't quote me on that. I could be wrong. My, every time I go back to my memory, it's just all over the place. But either way, it's along those lines. I'm paraphrasing. But there's like the lamp part there. And then there's a whole like switcheroo where Buffalo Bill or the cops, everyone thinks he's in one place. Turns out Clarence went to the right house. And there's, you know, 1v1 situation. She kills Buffalo Bill predictably. Saves a girl. I thought, okay, the movie's ending. But no, she gets a phone call from Lecter himself. He got out. He has a wig on and a hat on. Glasses on. Getting his revenge. Getting ready for his next meal. Assuming that he's gonna kill this neck, this guy in his suit. You know, eventually. You know, give a warning to Clarence saying that if she doesn't go after him, they won't go after her. It's like a mutual respecting. And, and then when he hangs up, she, she like wants to talk to him because she's that's the only person in the whole world currently that she feels connected. Doctor Lecter. Doctor Lecter. Too. So it's like she probably realizes the last time he's gonna see her, like see him. She may or may not miss him. That's me just me assuming stuff, but I'm assuming she's in some way a little bit gotta miss. And then the movie ends with the credits slowly following that guy. I was paying attention, like the one time I actually watched the credits, just, just slowly following his meal. So I can't believe I like waited so long, like 30 years, 30 goddamn years to watch it later. But it's really good. Again, I need to rewatch it. This part something like, like the whole insect stuff. I don't know what the hell that means, but hopefully I can figure it out. And I still don't get it. I'll just look it up on YouTube or Google. But Silence of the Lamb, 30 years later, it's still really damn good. And uh, go watch it. I'm sure you guys watching this video has already seen it. I'm like the only one who hasn't seen it yet. So shame on me, but I'm gonna give it a rewind. But yeah, I don't know what else to say. It's a really damn good film. That's basically it. So this has been the road so far. Thank you for watching.